it's going there. Well, joining us live now is Liberal Senator Holly Hughes and Labor MP Matt Thistlethwaite. Matt, uh, good, good morning to you both, by the way. Uh, first to you, morning, Matt, buddy. on aged care. Yeah, the, the government has made its submission so far to the Work Commission. It hasn't nominated a figure. So have you learnt your lesson from the minimum wage push during the election campaign? Well, we didn't nominate a figure for that uh, claim either. Um, that's 5.1 per cent. That's what, that's what Albanese was going for. Well, th that's what the Commission determined. And, and these are done independently, Pete. Um, it's up to the parties to put in submissions uh, and then they're determined independently by the Fair Work Commission. But we do know that uh, aged care workers are overworked and underpaid and that's why they're leaving the sector in droves, unfortunately. And if we want our... Uh, elderly Australians to get the care and support that they need and deserve in our aged care facilities. We need to make sure that we can encourage the best people to work in the industry. And that's what our submission is all about. It's about fair pay for fair work um, and making sure that people are paid properly. And this was something that was identified by the Royal Commission. They said that aged care workers are underpaid and deserve to be paid more. And hopefully we'll get a fair outcome but importantly, the government has pledged to, to fund the outcome, whatever that is. Holly, many have said um, that the, the one-off payments to aged care workers prior to the election was completely undercooked. Something more is needed to attract workers. The unions want in excess of 25% of an increase. What do you think about that figure? Is that enough this time? Well, I think Matt has a very short memory. There was a very clear comment by Mr Albanese in opposition that Fair Work should raise the minimum wage by 5.1%. There was also a figure of $275 that they can no longer mention, which was how much they were going to reduce power prices by. So far since this government's been in, we've heard they're going to raise, uh, raise wages for aged care workers, they're going to raise wages for early childhood workers, and they're also going to boost teacher pay. Uh, where is this money coming from? What are they actually trying to do here? Because every time we turn around, they're looking for the best and brightest to just go into every new field of the day that they tend to bring up. Uh, no one's denying that some of the pay rates for these people that do look after elderly Australians, I've got both parents requiring that thing, and it's very, very difficult for a lot of people, both Matt's and my age, as we try and juggle children and elderly parents and getting the best people to work with them. But we do have to be realistic. Where is this money coming from uh, and how is it going to be funded? Because these are also run by private organisations. So to be able to dictate those terms, how does this work? Matt, do you have any concerns about business and what they might be able to afford? And, and if the figure is too high, they could ultimately close? Well, um, mm. Holly's right. The Labor Party does want our aged care workers uh, to be paid a fair wage. We do want teachers to be paid a fair wage and childcare workers because they're they're performing incredibly important jobs. And at the moment, uh, we know educational standards in and outcomes in Australia are falling, that teachers are leaving the profession in droves, that they're overworked and underpaid. Um, all of these issues will be assessed by the Independent Fair Work Commission. And they have, um, in the legislation, a capacity to look at whether or not the businesses have the capacity to pay. And they generally come up with a fair outcome. Um, and we saw that with the minimum wage case. And I'm sure that we'll see that once again here. But Holly and the Liberal Party have to disclose to the Australian people, do you support workers in these industries receiving wage increases and fairer pay to ensure that our most vulnerable Australians get the care that they deserve? And you do, Holly? Paid by state governments, so we don't, you don't necessarily want to go across constitutional lines. That might be a first good start reading point. But as I said, aged care homes are predominantly run by private businesses. Now, if you start to force costs onto these businesses, they may have no option to close facilities, and that is going to be more problematic in the long run. So there also needs to be a bit of balance here in how it's going to work. Uh, Jacinta Price, switching topics now, Jacinta Price started this conversation last week that the welcome to country is being overplayed and now more and more Indigenous spokespeople are coming out and backing her up after TV shows have started playing at the head of the program. Matt, I'll, I'll start with you this time. Um, is, it play, is it being played too much? Is, is, the meaning, can, is, is there a risk of the meaning being diminished? Well, I guess, Pete, that that's something that uh, organisations should really consult local Indigenous elders about. Uh, 
So uh, in a number of settings now, we have welcomes to country um, that are performed. Uh, we perform one in the parliament every day. But I think the important thing is that that's done in um, consultation with local elders from local communities about whether or not it's uh, appropriate. And really, that's what the voice to parliament is all about. Uh, it's about First Nations Australians saying to uh, the parliament and to the rest of the population, we want to be consulted about decisions that affect us and our future. And I don't think that that's unreasonable. Right. That's why the Albanese Labor government's getting on with this important issue. Sure, but I mean, I mean, again, back to Jacinda Price and over to you now, Holly, and what you think about this. She says it's, you know, it, the, the meaning of it is, is, is symbolic and what does it actually do for a, a six-year-old Indigenous kid well, who's walking around the streets at six o'clock in the morning? Right. She's 100% right. It is symbolic and I think perhaps she is right that it is being overdone, which actually does demean the whole action. But perhaps Peter Fitzsimons can come and lecture her again, bully her again, on how an Indigenous woman from the Northern Territory is apparently a racist because she doesn't endorse his left-wing ideology. The fact a wealthy white man from the North Shore had the, you know, had the gall to bully an Indigenous woman because he doesn't agree with her views. But I'm guessing we will see the sisterhood that marched on Parliament House, those that attend the Fitzsimons Wilkinson Independence Day parties will be completely silent on this bullying of Jacinta Price. It is absolutely disgusting. And I find it just so ironic that it is people in the Labor Party that are particularly white, are coming out and ignoring Jacinta Price or condemning Jacinta Price, along with people like Warren Mundine, for not holding a homogenous view over The Voice, who actually are demanding that we have tangible outcomes for Indigenous communities, not more symbolism. And it seems to me those on the left, well, we know that's all they're capable of, symbolism. They don't think, I don't think they have any interest in genuinely improving the lives because they lose a cause. All right. Uh, Peter Fitzgerald... Can I just comment just, on that, Peter? Yep. Peter I, I, don't, I don't think that's fair. I, there's no one in the Labor Party that has condemned Well, I was Jacinta there for Price. Jacinta Price's uh, maiden speech is when the Labor Party could not stand up, views. including Pat Dodson, including Malandiri McCarthy, stayed seated, which is actually out of tradition in the Senate. Most people get... Uh, people stand up at the end of their maiden speeches. The Labor Party and the Greens, including Pat Dodson, including Ellen Durant McCarthy, sat down and watched. They did not stand up at the end. It was absolutely disgusting behaviour and it proves the point that they're all about symbolism and not about actually listening to Indigenous voices. Jacinta gave one of the best maiden speeches that's ever been heard in that place or the other place, and the Labor Party and all the Greens could bring themselves to stand up. Do you want to continue, Matt, with Discuss. closing thought? Well, yeah, I reject the assertion that anyone in the Make Labor your apologies. Party condemned Jacinta Price for anything that she has said. Uh, we respect her views and she is entitled to her views. OK, we are out of time. Uh, Peter Fitzsimons has, uh, has, de has denied that that is the case, uh, just as a footnote to that, but I suspect that, that mm. there will be a bit more to come on that. But uh, Holly and Matt, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. We'll come